Hello, welcome to TTV News on Thailand Radio and Television Station. Ladies and gentlemen, attending and giving a direct speech at National Conference summarizing 2023 and implementing the directions and tasks for 2024 of the Government Steering Committee 138 and the National Steering Committee 389 taking place on the morning of January 17. Deputy Prime Minister the Government of Trung Lu Wang emphasized 2024 will be a year of many difficulties and challenges for right prevention activities, anti-smuggling, trade routes, and counterfeit goods. The four ministries, central branches, and locality need to perform better coordination work to make it work more effective. Attending the conference at Standing Bridge Boys, there was standing vice chairman of the Province of People's Committee, Võ Đức Đào. After listening to the report summarizing the work results in 2023, the has in 2024 of the Government Steering Committee 138 and the National Steering Committee 389, as well as the opinions and presentations, proposals, recommendations of ministry, central and local departments. Deputy Prime Minister Trần Lu Quang head up the Government Steering Committee 138 and the National Steering Committee 389 suggest pay attention to the real energies and proposed institutions. Much prevention work combined with propaganda to raise people's awareness, limit abuse and entice people to participate in breaking the law. The functional forces need to review how to make it suitable to the actual situation and need a mechanism to collect information rapidly, effectively and accurately, application of information technology, digital transformation and especially project number six. On development of application of population data, electronic identification and authentication to serve national digital transformation in the period of 2022-2025, vision to 2030. Recalling the words of General Secretary Nguyễn Phú Trọng about the anti-corruption work with never slacking, no forbidden areas, no exceptions, Deputy Prime Minister Trần Lu Quang requested that the relevant functional courses need to strengthen education as well as inspection, examination and supervision to limit violations that occur during the performance of public duties. In the morning of January 17, the Propaganda and Training Department of the Provincial Party Committee organized a campaign to deploy propaganda tasks in 2024 just by Ms. Nguyễn Thị Xuân Hương, member of the Standing Committee of the Provincial Party Committee, has of the Propaganda and Training Department of the Provincial Party Committee. In 2023, the Provincial Propaganda and Training Department promptly advised, directed and guided the good implementation of all aspects of propaganda work, making a positive contribution to the province's overall resource in managing socio-economic development, implementing the task of building up the party and political system. The Provincial Party Committee's Propaganda and Training Department has completed 108 out of 108 tasks reaching 100%, including including advising the Provincial Party Committee and the Provincial Party Standing Committee to issue 70 documents that meet the quality and time as requested by the Provincial and Central Party Committee. Speaking at the conference, Ms. Nguyễn Thị Xuân Hương, member of the Provincial Party Standing Committee, head of the Provincial Party Committee's Propaganda and Training Department, directed the entire sector to focus on doing well the work of advising the party committee and directing, guiding and encouraging to perform the following key tasks, continue to improve the quality and effectiveness of advising on party building work in terms of politics, ideology and ethics, develop and propagate major policies and orientations on propaganda work, focus on thoroughly understanding and advising on the good implementation of the topics in 2024. Previously, in the afternoon of January 16, the Provincial Bills Council delegates included Mr. Nguyễn Thanh Ngọc, Chairman of the Provincial Bills Committee, Mr. Nguyễn Hồng Thanh, Head of the Provincial Party Committee's Internal Affairs Department, Mr. Nguyễn Thanh Tâm, Deputy Commander of the Provincial Military Command and Tenant City People's Council Delegation, had a meeting with voters in Bình Minh Camille. During this context, voters in Bình Minh Camille contributed many ideas related to rights 
hygiene ditches to ensure readiness and create conditions for people to travel more easily, create conditions for people to change land use purpose to build houses. Land transfer procedures must be signed close to the measurements, making it difficult for people to apply for land use rights certificates. Delegates of the People's Council at two levels and leaders of the City People's Committee receive recorded and explain voters' opinion. In the afternoon of January 17, the Department of Natural Resources and Environment organized a conference to summarize the work in 2023 and deploy tasks in 2024. Attending the conference, there was Mr. Trang Văn Chien, Vice Chairman of the Provincial Appeals Committee. According to report at the conference in 2023, the Department of Natural Resources and Environment of Tenen Province has achieved many positive results in management of land, water, and mineral resources environmental protection and inspecting and resolving complaints and denunciations, as well as administrative procedure reform. The conference also implemented key tasks in 2024. At the conference, Mr. Trang Văn Chính requested that the department need close coordination between units to carry out tasks in 2024, strengthening propaganda of laws on natural resource management and environmental protection. On this occasion, the Department of Natural Resources and Environment also signed an emulation contract and launched the emulation movement in 2024. On January 16, the Standing Committee of the Journalists Association of Tenen Province, in collaboration with the Vietnam Journalists Association and the Vietnam Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, awarded 60 scholarships to students in difficult circumstances in Tenen City and Châu Thành District. A scholarship is worth 1 million Việt Nam Dung. At the Peers Committee of World One Tenen City, the delegation awarded 20 scholarships to students with difficult circumstances during up a tech minorities at Phan Bội Châu Secondary, Bùi Thị Xuân Trần Quốc Toản and Lê Văn Tám Ramri Schools. At the Peers Committee of Anchor Camille Châu Thành District, the delegation also awarded 20 scholarships to students from Anchor and Nguyễn Văn Trọ Ramri Schools. Also in Châu Thành District, the delegation continued to award 20 scholarships to students at Châu Thành A Town Ramri School. Speaking at the scholarship awarding ceremony, journalist Nguyễn Thế Lực, standing vice chairman of Tenen Provincial Journalists Association, hopes that the scholarship will help students try to improve their studies and become good children and students. In the afternoon of January 17, the Secretary Committee of the Grassroots Trade Union and the Youth Union of the Nintendo Television Station organized the second Beautiful Living Forum with the team, position of TTV11. Attending the program, there were Mr. Vũ Xuân Trường, Secretary of the Party Committee, Director of the Nintendo Television Station, Mr. Võ Văn Quý, Deputy Secretary of the Party Committee, Deputy Director of the Nintendo Television Station. Participating in this contest, there are 15 candidates who are officials, workers, and youth union members of the Nintendo and Television Station. Contestants take turns competing in two parts, presentations and answering questions from the jury. At the forum, there were many meaningful presentations and innovative and creative opinions in expertise. In particular, the contestants also boldly raise limitations and inadequacies, thereby offering solutions and new ways of working together to build the TTV 11 brand and increasingly affirm TTV 11's position. At the forum, the jury also had many strangers and recorded the contestant contributions through the competition interests. In the morning of January 16, the Department of Health Interdisciplinary Food Hygiene and Safety Inspection Team continued to inspect food production, processing, and trading facilities in the city. This delegation checked legal documents, compliance with regulations on ensuring food safety and labels for business establishment products and took product samples for testing at Amuishong business households in Ninduk Quarter, Nintanwa, Tenen City. At the time of inspection, the facility was temporarily closed due to no audits, so the system was not detected.
Rural Inspection at Lang Chai Seafood Facility, located in Quarter 5 World Region City, on legal documents on food service business were presented. According to regulations, fresh vermicelli products were tested quickly, without tenable and additives. The inspection team also required establishments to continue to maintain good food safety conditions, especially sanitary conditions. The Department of Education and Training has just issued official dispatch number 145 about the Lunar New Year holiday in 2024. Currently, school from preschool to high school vocational education and continuing education will be closed from Monday, February 5, 2024, on December 26 of Lunar Month until Saturday, February 17, 2024, on January 8, Lunar New Year of 2024. For the Department of Education and Training, the Education and Training Officers of District Towns and the City are off from Thursday, February 8, 2024 to Wednesday, February 14, 2024. That is December 29 of Lunar Month to the end of January 5th of Lunar New Year. During 2024 Lunar New Year holidays, units and schools are responsible for assigning and arranging people to be on duty to protect headquarters, assess and safety of agencies, units and schools. On units and schools hand the national flag during the Lunar New Year holidays. In case the national flag is on, fatigue or torn, it must be replaced before handing. The Orion Vietnam has creations to become the third largest Tesla exporter to Canada with a market share of about 10%. This is an initial success because businesses have paid attention to the origins of materials according to CBTBB. But to develop further, Vietnamese Tesla's and government still needs a bilateral agreement or a free trade agreement to reduce export taxes when entering this market. Vietnam Textile Export Company is a name with over 20 years of experience, with key brothers being graphic teasers, children's clothing and labor protection clothing. This is also one of our two enterprises that affirms its advantages due to having enough capacity to produce fabrics that satisfy the origin principles of the comprehensive and progressive agreements for Chain Pacific Partnership or CBTPP. The deal is aiming at how to guide businesses to have clearer insights on investment and logistics strategies in connecting the chain of countries with the CPTPP to better exploit these agreements. Recently, Vietnam Textile Export Company has implemented a methodical investment strategy for reflective t-shirt products. The company currently has five facilities across the U.S. and is completing procedures to open a new location in Canada. This year, the company will open another facility in Canada to develop strongly in this market. This is a market where the government creates tax incentives for businesses in the textile industry to boldly invest. In fact, the consumption of textile products in the Canadian market is quite large, at a rate of 13 billion to 15 billion US dollars per year. However, Vietnam's textile and government exports in general are still very modest because most domestic enterprises have not been able to ensure the origin of ferrets according to the requirements of the CPTPP. They were written when the United States was part of the negotiations. Mm -hmm. So the United States proposed those rules, which, es which essentially limited the growth of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the growth of Vietnam. Mm -hmm. uh, now, they're not part of the agreement anymore, mm -hmm. uh, and, but we are stuck with the rules. It is estimated that Vietnam's export value in 2023 will be equivalent to the previous year's export level. Changing the principles of origin will therefore bring new momentum to Vietnam's state and government export in the future. 
Ladies and gentlemen, in the morning of January 17, 2024, student of IGC Tainan Primary's Middle High School has an interesting, practical and useful experiences at Tainan Radio and Television Station where they were introduced on the station activities, visit a specialized room and participate in the experiences of the days as a broadcaster. Visiting and studying program for students of IGC Tenen Primary Middle High School in collaboration with Tenen Radio and Television Station help students explore future careers and learn about related production activities to television. The students watch clips about the station's outstanding activities in recent times, visiting the station's special items and were introduced to the production process. Participating in the experience at the Nandran Television Station, contributions from many different departments, we would like to send our sincere thanks to the leaders of the Nandran Television Station and the uncles and aunties at the station for helping us have a very meaningful and useful experience. After this class, I understand better the work of the aunts and uncles in the station and feel that their work is truly meaningful and useful. In the future, I want to be a broadcaster, so I can tell more current news to everyone. The main point of the program is that the students experience as a television announcer. They were extremely excited to be experienced being a real broadcaster in the studio and to directly interview guests. This has created positive motivations, helping them set a dream for the future. I'm very honored to bring four great students to study and experience a day as a broadcaster at the Nintendo Television Station. I hope my students will learn basic skills at the television station. From there, we hope that they will have more career orientations for themselves in the future that are more suitable for them. Participating in the experience at the Nintendo Television Station, being set to reduce a television program that takes contribution from many different departments, we admire the uncles and aunts daily work even more. We would like to send our sincere thanks to the leaders of the Nintendo Television Station and the staff at the station for giving us a very meaningful and useful experience. Field trips and experience to develop skills are being implemented by school, thereby helping to develop awareness and practical thinking for children. The experience left a lot of impression on the teachers and students, and maybe in the future, these small officials will become rights broadcasters and program hosts of the station, along with others contributing to the strong development of the radio and television station. Discussing the content of the pilot decentralization mechanism for the district level in managing and organizing the implementation of national target programs, the majority of delegates approved the plan stipulating district level people's councils are allowed to decide to adjust the plan for allocating public investment capital and regular funding among national target programs in the medium term public investment plan, annual capital investment plan, and annual state budget estimates has been assigned by the competent authority. The state budget capital structure between investment and regular expenditures of component projects no longer has support objects to focus capital on implementing other component projects under the national target program of the period of 2021-2025. The non provincial National Assembly delegates expressed the need to clarify some issues in this content. If we only solve difficulties in the current period, decentralization will only focus on the provincial level because the local design is to be decentralized, but we use decentralization in implementation. It will be a work at first, so 2024-2025 period is only one year away, so I suggest that it should focus on decentralization to the provincial level. As for the district level, once the provincial level has done things smoothly, the next stage will move towards decentralization to the district level.
Còn đối với lại khoản... As for Clause 7, Article 4, two options are currently being designed. The first option is that decentralization to the district level has not yet been implemented, but only an orientation for the period of 2016 for the period of 2026-2030 is repaired. Option 2 will be implemented immediately, but the pilot is only limited to one district. So the above options are only designed to repair for the next days, so I'm very worried about that. And now the program wraps up now. Thank you for being with us and see you again.